Welcome to The Ovation Show, where we're discussing the healthcare crisis in America. We're bringing partners, colleagues, clients, and business owners together to discuss solutions and innovations that are bringing a higher quality of care to employees, reducing their out-of-pocket costs, but we're also reducing the employer's costs and giving them more transparency and control. Today, we're live in the Work Innovator Studio, where they're amplifying the voice of business. And today, I have Mike Patton with me, the CEO or president and founder of Excel Health Plans in the studio. And we're going to talk about level-funded health plans and how it's changing the way groups are getting and delivering their care. Mike, thanks for coming in. Hey, Dan. Thanks for having me. So I just made you CEO instead of president. So we're good. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. I was until uh, we just made a recent role change at the beginning of, of the year. So not a big deal. Well, it's great seeing you guys at Ascend. Um, we, did, we did a lot of business, of course, together this past fourth quarter, moving a lot of clients over to the Excel Health Plans. Um, I've been doing level funded for over a decade and, you know, when no one even knew what it was. And, <laughs> and it was a real struggle explaining everything about level funded. Before we dive into level funded health plans, none of us, you know, let's get to know you. None of us, <laughs> none of us get in the insurance industry on purpose. No one right. wakes up and says, dad, when I grow up, I'm going to be an insurance agent. But you know, how did you end up in the insurance? I guess that now you're, you're a health plan manager or owner. But how did you get into that space? Where'd you start? Yeah. So when I was a kid, I definitely wanted to be a uh, football coach. So I, I loved football, had a passion for it. Like the first time I ever played in fifth grade, I just loved the aggression of it and the strategy of it. And when I realized I probably wasn't going to play in the NFL when I stopped growing as a seventh grader, uh, I really focused on wanting to be a coach. So I actually was a student assistant, became a graduate assistant coach at Colorado State in Fort Collins while I was an undergrad. So I really wanted to be a football coach for a living, wound up coaching at uh, a school in Golden called Colorado School of Mines. It's a D2 school after I left CSU, wound up in between coaching gigs and needed some, some work. And my mom is a primary care provider of 35 years. So wound up working in her office. And the first gig I did there was medical billing actually. So they, they needed some help in the, the billing side and I hopped in and learned the ropes and, you know, started learning what a CPT code is and how to, how to tag all the DRG codes underneath it and, and was rolling from there. And the real reason that I got into healthcare after doing, you know, I did a bunch of jobs there, but people would have me help them with their EOBs after I did the billing. And someone had a pacemaker put in and it cost $600,000 because of a medical error. It started falling off. They had to go back in and reattach the pacemaker. And then the gentleman caught sepsis and was inpatient for a number of weeks. So it was, you know, pushing a million billed charges, 600K paid claims. And this is way back in 2012. And I just, I couldn't believe how expensive it was. And we had au pairs when my mom was in residency and they both work in the healthcare system in Sweden and Switzerland. And I asked them how much it would cost after I saw the size of this charge. And it was 15 and $18,000 back in 2012. And I asked them, you know, the scenario and laid it out for them. And they were both like, yeah, we would warranty that procedure for an American who paid cash and we wouldn't charge you anymore if we made an error. And I'm just sitting there like, okay, what? Why is American healthcare so expensive? Like this is this is not right. This is bad. And the more I started looking into the history of healthcare in America and the healthcare inflation, the more it really dawned on me what a problem it was. So yeah, in the be medical billing we see all the time. I know we had a charge with one of our clients, and it was one hundred twenty-five thousand for a couple of spinal injections. And I look up the CPT codes, and I look up Medicare rates, and I realize this should be about nine hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. And we called the provider and it turned out they were just crooks and they literally said, well, we just charge whatever we want and we'll take what we get. And so the, <laughs> that's literally what they said. And, and the, 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 even the employee called the, he didn't believe me. He called them. They told him the same thing. And then the TPA was very proud of themselves because they negotiated down to 75,000 and they're like, we saved you 50,000. I'm like, yeah, we're overpaying by 73,000 still and so i we actually wrote them a check for two grand and told them to keep it and that was all they're going to get out of us and it went away because they knew what they were doing it's amazing but, how it works yeah the system is just so broken and, and you know people like us are trying to fix it how did you end up with excel and creating a health plan though so I, you understand billing you're seeing the problems in the system mm -hmm. how did you end up where you are now yeah so 
after I realized how broken the system was, and I was very blessed while working at my mom's office that I did so many different things that are impactful in building these alternative self-funded plans and understanding all the processes that go on. So especially the Medicare plans, the Medicare Advantage plans tended to be the plans that had by far the most rules and restrictions around them that we accepted regularly. We we didn't accept very many Medicaid patients at the uh, office that I was at. So a lot of times getting specialty medications for those older patients was you had to follow the steps exactly and you had to know exactly what to do with the pharmacy in order to make sure that both the health plan would approve the drug as well as making sure that the pharmacy would be clear to uh, get the drug to the member. So a lot of the things that we currently have to do around specialty pharmacy, I learned by having to help the MAs in, in the office figure out how to get help people get their meds dispensed. Um, so working there, I, I really wanted to understand the flow of money was what I thought would be the biggest key to understanding healthcare. And I looked into working for either a carrier or a hospital system, talked to a number of them. They both made it pretty clear that it would take a very long time in the vicinity of a decade and being intentional to even understand how the money really flows from their side of the fence. Uh, I wasn't particularly interested in waiting that long, although it's it's taken that long anyway. But uh, I so after that, I, I talked to some friends and they said, hey, you know, the brokers, the large consulting houses have analyst positions. You should go talk to them about that, which is what I did. They, of course, wouldn't hire a 24 year old with uh, football coaching experience. But a couple of them were like, hey, you have a good personality. You should you should look into be getting into sales in this business. And uh, through a booster from Colorado State, I got a job at a benefits consulting firm headquartered in Northern Colorado, or just, you know, a general PNC and benefits. It was actually a PNC producer who got me in and started just selling Buka plans. So interestingly enough, in Colorado, you know, we have Great West, which was kind of the inventor of the level funded product. So when Cigna purchased them in the mid 2000s, you know, that product actually dominates the Colorado market. It probably has, I don't know, at, at least well over 50% market share of the sub 500 life business, you know, especially 50 to 500, they really dominate that space. So uh, that product definitely helped me understand level funding. And through there, I worked for a benefits consulting firm and just wrote a lot of buka stuff self-funded my first case in 2016 was able to save a construction company a lot of money by just carving out a pharmacy benefit manager uh carving out the pbm there was huge specialty med utilization and they were getting huge increase 70 80 percent and we were able to get them down to around single digits 10 percent just by carving out the pbm putting in script sourcing i think we switched it to pareto but uh that's that's what we were able to do and i was like oh this is the best thing every one of my groups needs to be doing exactly this so i went to go move two of my cases that were heavy on specialty spend to this model not knowing at the time that how in bed with cigna my firm really was and i tried to move the cases and my bosses basically told me you will commit to not moving these cases or you might as well just walk out the door uh, because of how high a percentage of our total revenue came from came from Cigna. I mean, to the point where I would I basically was like, we're effectively a direct writer for Cigna and was not really cool with that. I thought that was a huge conflict of interest. So from there, I, I quit and started my own benefits consulting firm after interviewing with a handful of other shops and not being satisfied with the level of control over where I would place business I would have. And when I started my own firm, I had run into, you know, Nelson and Gary Becker and John Sabraco and, and a gentleman named Drew Rosmerick, who's now with Allied National. And I learned a lot about self-funding from them and decided I was going to run with reference-based pricing on as many groups as I could. So in 2017, I started writing a ton of RBP groups. And, and then in 2018, we had a very interesting event occur in Colorado where our two largest hospital systems 
went nuclear effectively on RBP and they would not accept it. it. It was in the summertime of 2018 and to the point where to this day, if you show up with a PHCS ID card or without any of the other uh, logos, PPO logos on your card, they will simply turn you down at site of care. And there's a lawsuit that actually Elapse won against one of the systems, but they still <laughs> haven't changed their tune. And with that, we had to change our groups to moving to more of a steered PPO type of model. So using the concepts of managed care plans like Medicare Advantage that I learned back at my mom's office, we deployed those concepts. You know, those plans are highly managed on the Medicare Advantage side because they have no choice. They have to take on risk. I mean, you could be taking on risk on someone who's 100 years old and you're only getting 2200 bucks a month from the federal government and United Healthcare or Aetna is taking on the rest of the risk. So it might sound like a lot, but on someone who's 100 years old or 90, <laughs> there's a high risk factor yep. there and they manage them very heavily. So we tried to make our plans function more akin to those plans than to traditional plans started working with bundled surgery and imaging and decided to create a prior auth wall for the member outreach to the member and say, Hey, if you'll go to here for outpatient surgery, he, there for outpatient imaging, we'll waive all your out of pocket costs to see if that free incentive was meaningful to the member. And after about 12 months of having some RBP groups and groups that look like that, we found that the PPO with the steerage option only ran, you know, eight to 10% higher than the reference based pricing plans. So you hit a lot of things in that. And so I want to kind of backpedal a little Absolutely. bit and get into start off with what the health plans are. So, you know, we've got these blue cross United healthcare fully insured plans, which mm -hmm. everyone's very comfortable with. You go in, you pay your premium every month, you get this block of coverage. You don't really have a plan selection. You, you know, you pick a plan, but you have, you have no say in anything. And the rates are like in Texas, the rates are filed with the state. They yep. are what they are based on the enrolling census. I mean, you can't negotiate and can't do anything with that. With a level funded through Excel, mm -hmm. what we've noticed, I mean, the plans realistically that they're identical to what we find with a Blue Cross United Healthcare plan. Yep. Um, you know, in fact, actually, we see the copays are better. Yep. Uh, lower. And then we'll get into the disappearing deductible and those free bundle type things where we're saving money. But let's first talk about. If you have a fully insured Blue Cross plan that somebody's really used to, they understand mm -hmm. that, and you have this other plan that looks at almost exactly the same with Excel, but it's level funded. What does level funded mean? So the comparison that I like the best for level funded versus fully insured health plans is guaranteed issue life insurance versus doing a medical exam for life insurance. So when you go get life insurance, everybody knows you can go get a medical exam and you'll get your health risk assessed. And if you're relatively healthy, you can get relatively affordable term life insurance. However, if you say to the term provider, give me guaranteed issue, no matter what my health condition is, what an insurance company is always going to do is price high for the worst case scenario. And that's effectively what especially community rating health, fully insured health plans are, is that they're just taking the worst case scenario. Um, for the groups, you know, say here in Texas, north of 50, they are taking your risk factors into account, but not to the same level that a level funded group is. And a level funded group is going to take your risk completely into account and say, we're going to price your group according to what we think your risk is. And, and actually for us at Excel, you know, we obviously have the cost containment built in. But the Cigna Level Fund, United's All Savers product, they're actually doing the exact same thing where they're taking a look at your group and, and looking at the what they perceive your risk to be, and then they're going to score your group off your risk specifically. Well, I think it's interesting because prior to, say, I think 2010, in Texas, at least, Blue Cross, United Healthcare, they collected health information on applications, mm -hmm. questionnaires, and they did underwrite their groups. Yep. ACA got rid of that, said, yep. hey, you can't do that anymore. Now you're just doing community-based rating and 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 that's where the level funded that we're using for groups like you said great western was doing 50 plus and that's where we saw it signal was doing a uh great western great west was doing it 50 or more mm -hmm. and then we started seeing the carriers come back in and say hey we can do this too in the smaller numbers yep and we can collect it as long as it has to be on a self-funded platform so it gets around the aca regulations um so we started seeing a lot more of that coming up and we were doing that, i think originally with assurance um 
Great West wasn't here anymore. Uh, Signal was still 50 plus. Aetna started doing it. In fact, Aetna and Humana jumped. They Aetna. pulled out of the market and they came back and said, we're only doing level funded or, or yep. under underwritten plans. Exactly. And that's kind of been Aetna's model mm -hmm. really post ACA is that they don't really like the fully insured community rated market at all. It's more a large group and level funded mm -hmm. is all they aim for. So it's interesting. But when you mentioned like all savers and what we've realized too, is they are doing the underwriting and medically underwriting but their rates aren't any better than what the fully insured market mm -hmm. is. And that's where groups like Excel came in and even Allstate, they got into the market as well. They, well, they bought national general. Yep. Um, but we start seeing actual true rates being dropped, getting 20, 30, 40% lower than blue cross, United healthcare, et cetera. When we did true medical underwriting and that that's a, a significant when you get the exact same plan, but you're in a healthy group. Why should I pay more if our group is healthy? Mm -hmm. Um, but let's talk about the medical underwriting because this is a, something that you guys yep. I've embraced. One of the issues we've always had with level funding, of course, you go to an employer, I've got to get a health questionnaire for everybody. You got to fill out a piece of paper. Yep. We started using e-health apps. At least we we're getting to do it online. But even then, it was still a lot of times pulling teeth to get people to complete that. You started doing predictive underwriting or uh, using artificial intelligence. And talk a little bit about that because now it's literally we give a census and it goes out into the world and comes back with a risk score. So talk about how, how that artificial intelligence and underwriting works. Yeah, absolutely. So like the first vendor to get into that was Curve or GRX by Milliman, which was really just looking at pulling the pharmacy data. And our program uses a couple different of the more modern versions of that. So we work with Verikai for our program. So Verikai uses both the similar type of information that Curve uses in terms of the pharmacy information and cross references it with all sorts of social information, you know, things like driving records, public records, spending information, social media information, so they can understand your spending and risk habits. And then they score the population kind of like a workers comp mod where every member gets a specific score. Then they blend that together and give the group a score. So that's, it, it is kind of big data AI where we're able to take a census with people's names, addresses, zip codes, that type of information, match it up against the database and put together the risk factors. And some of our other underwriters use a system called Gradient, which actually goes to the claims clearing houses. So when a medical claim occurs, most of that data is routing through what's called a clearing house, which is between the administrator and the hospital system for that claim. They store all that data. Change uh, Healthcare is one of the biggest ones. And they uh, Gradient actually buys all of that historical claims data from those clearing houses so they can match the members up and say, here's the actual claims data associated with these members. Um, the only disadvantage with Gradient is, is they're not able to identify individually who the members are. So you know, there's kind of two different databases and two different philosophies for underwriting, but both of those tools, as you say, make it so much easier for a benefits consultant to show up to a group and say, okay, give me your census. I can come back to you with at least a relatively accurate rate, underwritten rate versus just, you know, purely illustrative. I need you to fill out 75 health <laughs> questionnaires, which, you know, probably is not going to happen. So that way, because what ha what we do on the Verikai platform is we'll flag you know a few of the high risk members and ask them for health questions. But if you can walk in the door and say, "Hey, I have rates that are twenty percent cheaper than your current," the company is a lot more interested in in giving their employees a kick in the tail to go fill out those eight or nine health apps now that they think they can save a fair amount of money. Yeah, you said something. It, it's terrible when we go in. So he says, "Oh, let me just see the rates." They're like, "Well, I can't give you accurate rates. They're going to be illustrative only," and because we don't have the health information. And so now be able to get that, give a census, because the census is always easy to get, mm -hmm. um, and be able to just run that through. We don't even need socials. It's just that basic names and addresses. Um, and I, it's interesting because I think about this, we always talk about people, you hear it, you, know, you have a digital footprint. Yep. That's really what's doing that digital footprint. It's taking a picture of it and uh -huh. it's giving you a score based on that. Exactly. So there's, you know, there, there can be actually be a benefit to all that information that's out there. Exactly. You, can get a, you, you know, you can actually get a lower rate based on what you're doing in your life. Exactly. Um, so look, look at the plan. So we've got a plan that looks just like the normal fully insured plan. 
It's been medically underwritten. And in most of our cases, we've seen, like I said, a 20 to 40% reduction in costs because they're looking at the risk. But I, some of the unique things that I really liked in your plan is what we talk about in the mastermind all the time is getting a better quality of care um, at a lower cost to employees. And in a lot of cases, when we're building a true self-funded plan, we try to eliminate some of those costs by, hey, we're going to direct you over here. If you choose to get your MRI here, mm -hmm. it's free. Yep. Or if you choose to get this medicine here, it's free. So we eliminate that cost and it reduces the, what the plan is paying for those. You created the disappearing deductible in your plan. So can mm -hmm. you talk a little about what that is? Yeah. So the disappearing deductible and the concept behind it is really just like you described, Dan. It's aligning the incentive for the member. So that way the member's best financial interest is actually the same as the plan's best financial interest. And at the macro, all we're doing is creating pool risk. So all the groups that you place with Excel versus all the other groups we place with Excel, if we can change members' behavior, even at a 5, 10, or a 20% clip versus every other health plan out there, there's a big difference in terms of the way our risk will perform versus theirs, which will continue to give us a price competitive advantage. So the way the disappearing deductible functions is, hey, Mr. Such and Such, you need to go. So my dad got a hip replacement back in 2019 in South Denver. It costs $130,000. In, in in a hospital in, in Littleton. And that surgeon actually can go to Coral and do a bundled surgery at another location about four miles away from that hospital. And he can deliver that surgery for 21 grand on Coral versus the 130,000 that, you know, my dad's big corporate Cigna plan paid for his. And, and the funniest part about that is that the surgeon only made four grand of that 130 my mom is actually friends with him hmm. and so he he doesn't recover that much and interestingly enough his practice owns a position in the surgery center so they'll actually recover a higher rate at the twenty one thousand dollar price point than they will going to the hospital system and doing it at the facility because really all that money is just being siphoned directly through the hospital system so it's interesting that there's both financial alignment between the provider and the member and the plan. And, and so it's really just saying, hey, if you're willing to go here, you won't have to pay anything. And that's the same thing is very true for imaging. And then as you mentioned, especially the specialty medications. And, and what I like the most about the program is members who need those events, that creates a lot of fear in members. The cost of medical care most people don't have $500 in the bank, let alone four to $8,000 out of pocket to pay for that, you know, expensive specialty med, to pay for that surgery, to pay for that imaging. So members are, it, you know, what happens is members will skip care that they need because they are afraid of the financial consequences of seeking that care. And the disappearing deductible gets rid of that and says, Hey, okay, just go to green imaging and we'll get your MRI and it won't cost you anything. And they're like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll go get it if I don't have to pay for it. Because as we all know, delaying medical care has a huge impact on our ability to make sure, you know, those conditions don't get worse for people. Well, I know we had someone recently there, they were getting a colonoscopy. It wasn't going to be fallen or mm -hmm. preventive. It was going to actually go towards the insurance. And so the, the doctor quoted 13,000 for this colonoscopy with whatever included in it. Mm -hmm. And it was really, I thought that was really high. Mm -hmm. So we do some research on that and it was with, through the network. Um, we came back and said, well, look, if you go over here and the employee, the employees have to pay 3000 out of pocket of yep. that. And so if you go over here, which is again, was about four miles down the road. Um, and it was another hospital. You, they'll do it for $3,300 yep. all in. If you go there, number one, it would save the employer $10,000 roughly, right? Eight, seven, 8,000, mm -hmm. but you won't have any out of pocket. You know, and that employee may have done the exact same thing. I don't have 3000 I'm going to have to wait to get this done, even though my doctor says I need to get it done. Right. Or I'm going to go into debt over it. And this is an opportunity for the employee to say, I don't have to, I can get this done and it's not going to cost me anything. Right. So it's great to do that. So I know in your plan, the disappearing deductible, some of the services covered, we've got, of course, specialty meds, through yep. script sourcing. We've got imaging. Yep. Um, I think it's through green imaging. Uh, and coral. And so, coral. So we use multiple players there, but yeah whatever we can get our hands on. Diabetic is, supplies is yeah, a big Yeah, Thrive, and 
We also have cancer care available at zero cost to the member, which is huge for the members who are in that tough situation. You know, we have a lot of outpatient oncological care available at a really low price, you know, kind of less than RBP type pricing. And we once again offer, and, and the interesting thing for members too is on the oncological side, like it doesn't matter where they're seeing a provider. Like you could go to MD Anderson, see an oncologist at MD Anderson or at Mayo or wherever you want to go and then get your treatment. They, they can set your treatment regime and then you can go to the outpatient center for your treatment. And then, then it's still free to you and you're paying your $55 specialist copay to go see the provider and nothing on your actual treatment regimen because we're able to source those drugs for reasonable costs. You know, we have you know, a member in the East Coast where they are on a breast cancer medication and it costs thirty six, thirty eight thousand a fill. And we're able through this program to get that same medication, you know, just direct from the specialty pharmacy for about sixty eight hundred bucks. So that level of markup is all over the place in oncology care. And if we can just source that drug at the best mm -hmm. price, even in the US market, I mean, not a lot of times it isn't even international. It's just like, hey, just let's just pay a reasonable price for this thing and don't let someone mark it up 6x. And and just doing that can have a huge impact on what a plan spends. I think that's the key when you look even renewals going forward. I mean, it's a plan spent. How much did we spend the year before? How much are we going to spend next year? And that's where those renewals come in. If you can control that spend, you control what the renewal looks like, mm -hmm. you control how much the plan is going to cost. It's been great. Um, so I kind of want to rehash because we, we went a lot of deep on something. Yep. We went over the top. So looking at the Excel health plans and level fund in general, but looking at Excel in particular, my experience is the plans built. It looks and feels just like the plans you have at Blue Cross, United Healthcare, Aetna, Humana, et cetera. Yep. Um, we, I know, have seen anywhere between 20 and 40 percent, even a little bit more in some cases, costs lowered uh, because it's it's underwritten. Yep. But, we, but you've gotten away from having to do the health questionnaires, health apps, which were always a pain. Um, and you're doing that now, the predictive underwriting and the, the artificial intelligence underwriting, which makes it quick and easy. Yep. Um, you've got lower copays in the other plans we're finding. You've got lower out of pocket costs. Um, the plan designs are great. Um, and you're giving, you're basically getting people, helping them get free diabetic supplies. They're getting uh, imaging for free. We're getting free specialty drugs. Make the list goes on of everything that you built into this great plan. And it's not just to control costs; it's also to benefit the member. Exactly. So what? Um, what are? Let's give me three things that you think people should think about when they're looking at the Excel Health plans, or. Um, I mean, three takeaways for people. Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway is always the benefit to the member. So for any company looking at Excel Health Plan, the biggest benefit is that a lot of the healthcare that your member is going to be able to seek, they're going to be able to get for free. So that's the biggest benefit of Excel is that we have this disappearing deductible tier kind of above all of your class of benefits that you would have on your Blue Cross United plan where it's like, hey, if any of these things happen, you don't have to pay for it as long as you're willing to follow some directions. And that's the great thing about it is that the choice and the power is all back in the member's court. So the default, if the member says, well, I don't want to do that. My primary care said, well, I need to go here. That's fine. Then your plan defaults to looking just like your Blue Cross United plan does. But now. at lower cost. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it, it, it's possible a member can go to the $130,000 hip replacement facility, but they're going to have to pay their $6,000 mm -hmm. to go there. And, and as long as we can win in the macro and make sure more of our members are taking the free plan than are making that decision, then we're still going to win in the end. Uh, the next thing I would say that's the biggest is, is just also on the member side is that members have faced most of the cost increases that have gone on over the last decade. I mean, healthcare costs have inflated at the, the cost of premium from an individual is up at least five X since the year 2000. So all of that cost in general is being shifted to members in the form of lower pay. And, and just most of those cost increases, the company has to eat in contribution. And, and a lot of companies, as you know, are capped out. They can't afford to contribute any more to those plans. So they have to either worsen the benefit 
or they're having to decrease the contribution or some combo of both. So because we're, you know, and at, we at Excel believe all of this risk is overpriced and a product like this, we can reduce the cost of the risk. Then you're able to bring some of that savings back to your members, put it directly back in their pockets. And when you have a 3% unemployment rate nationally, that's a big deal in terms of your workforce retention. And, and the last thing I would say is that the macro impact of XL health plans. I mean, we're someone, you know, people like ourselves in the mastermind, we have to continue to work together to put plans like this and deploy them in the marketplace. If we're ever going to get enough momentum to force a change in the, in the macro market where health plans need to look like this, it, or they'll become uncompetitive because, you know, we've just seen so many examples of these types of plans working, whether it be Rosen hotels is obviously the most famous and well-known example where they're spending about a third of what the national average does on a plan that doesn't even have a deductible because they do direct primary care. They have a direct contract. They send it to bundled surgery or whole foods. That's been doing a lot of these concepts for a long time and they have a very controlled spend as well. So large employers have done this, but in general, most of the employer community hasn't adopted strategies like this. So yeah, that, that would be the next thing is just the adoption of these strategies at the macro scale. I think you hit something on the head too. We talk to employers and they'll say, oh, this sounds all new and something different. I said, no, these are what large employers have been doing for decades. Mm -hmm. We're just being able to now scale it down and bring it to the smaller employer. Yep. Um, and you, I mean, we've got groups with you as low as I think five enrolled. Yeah. And then we've got some that have 80 employees that are moved over to you this year from Blue Cross, actually. You know, you, one thing you mentioned before we kind of get out of here, but reference-based pricing, you mentioned, you know, hospitals fight that. We have a very difficult time with that in Dallas-Fort mm -hmm. Worth. And one of the things that I made your plan so great here is that partnering with ABA, which yep. is one of the larger TPAs in the nation, <clears throat> who's also based here in Dallas, and we do a lot of business with them. You partnered with them. And then, of course, they have the United Healthcare Network. They have a special contract. Mm -hmm. So now your Excel Health Plan has this great administrator behind it with this very strong network, making your plan even stronger in the Texas market. Yep. Um, and that's where I think we had so much success with it. So, you know, congratulations on that. Thank you. But picking good partners and, and making it work. Um, but I really appreciate it. I mean, I wanted to really get the word out of Excel because we've moved so many groups over to you. And we have a lot more coming, but it's just the plan is fantastic. It's working great. We're seeing the members and the employers get savings and really, in my opinion, being charged what they should be for their health plan. Yep. You know, and get away from those big increases each year as well. So, yeah, because I mean, I think that's the biggest thing for the employer is it isn't even how much they're paying right now. It's what does a 10% increase five times in a row between now and 2028 do to your financials? Yep. Yeah. So like we say on our website, you know, better benefits, lower costs. That's the ultimate goal of, in the mastermind of, of, of consultants and brokers and people like us. So I appreciate you, everything you're doing. And thanks for coming in. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Dan. Hey, thanks, Mike. And everybody, I uh, appreciate you tuning in for this. And uh, here's a couple words from our sponsors. Thank you to our sponsors and supporters. 33 Inc., helping your brand grow with custom screen printing, embroidery, and merchandising solutions. Smart Business Concepts, providing financial services to drive profitability, scalability, and flexibility of your company. And Texas CEO Magazine, informing and educating business leaders across Texas since 2010. As business leaders, we all know that healthcare is expensive. In fact, it's one of the top five expenses in most companies. The decisions you make or don't make in your healthcare plan can have financial repercussions down the road. But not all is lost. There are ways to take charge and get your employees the best possible care, all while reducing overall costs for us as employers and employees, too. Get your copy of Life and Death Decisions in the C-Suite, where Dan Lebrod and his colleagues pull back the curtain and address how the private health care system and health insurance industry have plagued businesses for decades. What you'll discover will empower you to take back control over your health insurance costs that could mean massive savings for your company while giving your employees better quality health care. Get your free copy now at the link below or using the QR code provided.